Viral Joshi, welcome to How I Got Through It. Sure, thank you so much for having me. So we all watched you on Netflix. And I think the first person that was incredible that walked into my life and he sat down in front of me for our first date, I actually mm-hmm. felt like my body buzzing. I was like, mm-hmm. what the hell is this? Yeah. Right? <laughs> and it actually- you know, for me, in full transparency, this isn't anything I've said out loud to anybody yet. It bothered me that he never. And that's fucked up by the way. And that's fucked up. <laughs> Straight up. And you know, and my friends would tell me like, girl, why doesn't he do that? People put romantic relationships so much on a pedestal, more so than being a participant in your own life. Like what you're talking about, like learn a skill, like have your own friends, build a mm-hmm. business, yeah. do something right for yourself. You know, a re- don't let a relationship be the thing that completes you or defines you. You know, you are more than just someone's plus one. Mm-hmm. Hey everyone, before we get into the episode, I just wanted to thank you for choosing to listen to how I got through it. If you're a new listener, the way that you can support the show is really simple. Just hit the follow button in this app. It would mean so much to me if you did, and I super appreciate your support. Let's get right into the conversation and welcome to how I got through it. Viral Joshi, welcome to How I Got Through It. Thank you so much for having me. So the show is called How I Got Through It. You just recently went through a very public experience on Netflix. For people that don't know you, can you share a little bit about what that experience was? Yes. So I was on the Netflix show Indian Matchmaking Season 2 and Season 3. I'm one of the people whose journey you follow with Seema Auntie, the matchmaker from Mumbai, And her job is to find great matches for us and set us out on dates. And hopefully we find the one. Yeah. (laughs) And then then in season three, the match that I had in season two, the story continues. I'm kind of curious, why a matchmaker? Why did you opt to do that at this time? You know, I was, I had tried everything. I tried like my friend networks. I tried work conferences. I tried dating apps. And then when the opportunity came up to work with a matchmaker, it was just, you know, I've tried everything, I've done everything and nothing's working. So it's important that I try something different, right? Because that saying, do the same thing over and over again and expecting different results is insanity. So I was like, I don't want to be insane. Let me try something different. And I think it's so cool and so brave of you. It is an avenue that I think if you're wanting an Indian spouse, it is Mm -hmm. certainly something that has happened so much in our culture, right? Like people do it- in WhatsApp groups, I hear parents get together and they're like, here's my son, here's my, you know, like matchmaking is happening. And I think it's an interesting part of our culture that is now being shown on TV. And, and when you look at the stats too, when you're matched, that's kind of when the longevity of a marriage lasts also, because you're getting to know each other and you Mm -hmm. meet through mutual friends or your parents, and then you get to know about a little bit about that family. And it's a little bit more um, inclusive, you know, kind of like when in India, your, your village would be a part of your match. Um, So I think that's really cool and really brave also to kind of have that part of your life played out on Netflix because when I was watching the show, I'm like, shit, I don't know if I want anyone to watch right, my day right. on, t- on TV <laughs> yeah, and be able to comment on such a thing. So mm-hmm. tell me what happens in season two for people that want to start maybe watching the show. And at this point, you know, if you guys are listening to this, you can do any spoilers. That's totally fine. So season two comes and I get matched with someone who with the same name as me, his name is Viral. <laughs> we we get matched the date it's it's fun I have a great time he has a great time but we realize that we're just gonna walk away from this as friends mm-hmm. and so that was date one then I went then see Monty calls me she checks in hey how did date one go I was like you know it was great I think he's like someone I can have a really fun time with but I don't know that I see any longevity here yeah and she was like okay I can understand that and then she gives me another match and then in that match I personally felt like he did not look like the profile photo that I saw. I'm someone who, like many, believe physical attraction is important. It's the thing that gets your foot in the door in many, in apps, in relationships. You know, it starts with, oh, this person is cute. I want to get to know them more. Mm-hmm. So that happened. She checked in with me after that. I was like, you know, he's great, but the physical attraction just wasn't there for me on my side. And then she sets me up with a third match. That one we see at the end of the show works out very well. Um, and then outside of the show, he and I went on to date for eight or nine months. 
Yeah. So in season two, he meets me and my parents at the same time. Mm -hmm. uh, that was kind of weird, but that is how it works in Indian culture. You know, you, right. the guy comes over with sometimes his family and then your family's there at your house. And then you guys go into like a different room and like talk or like you guys go out while the parents talk. Yeah. So they tried to like show that. And then in season three, we see me go to India to meet his parents where his parents live. Mm -hmm. So our relationship really progressed. And then we go on more dates in New York because that's where he lives. Um, and I live there now, too. <laughs> um, <laughs> And then, yeah, he takes me as his plus one to a wedding. And then we, the last thing you see is us driving off into the sunset. So what has happened after season so, three? So after season three, he and I decided, you know, we were great in the short term, probably not in the long term. Mm -hmm. uh, I think there was just a little bit of a long term value mismatch. Mm -hmm. And so I think that ultimately just ended it. You know, I do think Simon D did a really good job finding the match, but ultimately, um, you know, it's not always just the checklist that's going to make things work out long-term. Right. But it's right. a good starting point. Yeah, exactly. So, you know, in other dating scenarios, you don't have to explain your breakup on your Instagram. Right. Um, right. And so the, in this scenario for you, this is something new in your life. And this is also right. your life, which I want to be very frank about. Like, this is not just something we're watching. This is your mm -hmm. actual life. And right. when I think about that and thinking about like, oh, all these people are watching you and rooting for you. I was rooting for you too, actually, you know, <laughs> oh, thanks. And, yeah. and then you hear that you've gone your separate ways. What are you comfortable sharing about that breakup? And mm -hmm. I'm framing the question in the sense of in a relationship, you have to also become the scientist of yourself, right? Mm -hmm. Like, what do you want? How do you feel around this person? Do you see yourself long-term with this person? So what was it? that made you think this might not be the right thing for me? Yeah, I think one thing I noticed about myself and a lot of my girlfriends do the same thing. We lose ourselves in our relationship. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we make a lot of sacrifices that we traditionally wouldn't. I think women just in general, it feels like we bend over backwards a lot more yeah. to make the relationship work, or at least that's the pattern I see in my life amongst my girlfriends. You know, yeah. we're doing whatever it takes to mm -hmm. make it work. And then ultimately... When things don't work out, I think at that point, we have to really look inward and be like, why didn't this work out? And you have to have that question. And then you have to ask yourself, what did I not vocalize earlier in my relationship? Or what did I learn about myself now that I know moving forward that I'm going to look for in my next partner? Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I'm very comfortable talking about my breakup. I think there's a lot of perceived embarrassment or shame with the relationship, like breakups happening. You know, everyone's like, oh, it's because there's something wrong with me. Right. That, that's why it didn't work out. But that's not always the case. It's not necessarily the case, you know. And so I think I'm totally open talking about it because it's something we all experience. And I think if we normalize the conversations that come with like the feelings and the heartbreak and all that stuff that comes with learning how to put yourself out there again, getting over people, I think it's important to have those conversations. And then also, how did you get through it? Yeah. Yeah. So number one, I want to know what happened. So one day we had a, an in-person conversation to him and I, it was important that we do this in person because we went through a lot you know, this whole relationship was very unconventional from the beginning. And then we had the long distance, but we were still committed. And so we wanted to have a, an appropriate conversation in person. And one thing I learned is values have to align in the moment, but also in the long term. Maybe a lot of people have already learned, but if they haven't, it's something they could learn. I think we all know that actions speak louder than words. And so in the beginning of any relationship, both parties, they say things we think the other person might want to hear to make it easier or to keep the relationship going or whatever yeah. it is. But ultimately actions will speak louder than words. So if you want to know what someone's values are, you know, I think we all say to some degree, like quality friendships, family, we work life balance. We say all of that, right? Mm -hmm. Cause it sounds good. It's probably what the other person wants to hear, but in reality, our actions will show what our true values are. And I think ultimately for me, after eight or nine months, I think we realized that they were just different. Yeah. I think time is my friend in the dating scenario. And even with friendships, right? Like any relationship, I always feel like you give this person three months, four months, and not that you're like watching their moves, but you're right. right. In the beginning of a relationship, everyone sends in their representative, you know, like their best self. Yeah. And those two people are going on the dates, these two representatives. Mm -hmm. And then eventually they get tired and your, your true self comes out then you have no choice but to see who you are dating at six months. What mm -hmm. if communication really is 
as important to them as they say it is. You know, I put out a question on Instagram. What questions do you want to ask Viral? The amount of questions about friggin' dating like, that you have yeah. to, that you're, we're going to go through today. Yeah. I think that everyone's having a challenging time. So I'm really, really thrilled that we're talking about this and talking about the emotions and just kind of opening up that conversation, especially as females. So mm-hmm. how, how did you get through it? Yeah. So what's interesting with a relationship that plays out publicly on TV is that I also see it with, with you guys when it's all said and done, but I look at it knowing that my relationship is over, you know, right. to the world at the time, I wasn't allowed to really say anything. Mm -hmm. So the world's looking at this beautiful story, right? I think they did a great job producing it. They really did. And that is the reality of my relationship at the time that it was shot. But then the relationship's over. I'm looking back at it. And at that point, it had been like two months or so. Um, And you're finally at a point in your life after two months after a breakup where you're back into your routine and your life without that person, the way it was before they entered your life. Mm -hmm. And then you try and figure out like, you're, you've, you've already hopefully by then kind of figured out like what it looks like. And then you're thinking about maybe putting yourself out there again. You know, you've taken the time to heal. And then the show came out and I had to relive a lot of things. And then their, their memories over time during a breakup when we're processing it that we suppress or we forget about memories fade over time. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I was watching the show back and I was like, oh, I forgot about this or I forgot about that. And like, when we're in India, you know, his dad is like, you'll come back in August. And then I totally forgot that he and I had made plans for me to go back later in August with him when his brother was also coming. And to see that again, the memories associated with those feelings comes back again. So it definitely set me back. I thought I had progressed much more than I definitely was. And then so seeing it all play out, I went back into a much earlier stage of the breakup. And then what worked for me is like, it's all I thought about. It was in my head all the time. I would wake up. He was the first thing I thought about, or like the relationship not being there was the first thing I thought about because every morning I would wake up to a good morning text, right? Mm -hmm. Because he was, he was always up before I was. So I was always so used to seeing that every day for eight or nine months. Mm -hmm. And then, so he was of course the first thing on my mind. And then you you have to retrain your mind that, Hey, that text message isn't going to be there. Mm -hmm. or things like that conversation that I would have with him all day, every day, Mm -hmm. isn't going to be there anymore. Mm -hmm. I needed to occupy my mind. My mind was, I was just wallowing, you know, I was, all I was doing every day was just calling people to like get my mind off of it. But then my friends always wanted to check in. How are you doing? Right. So I didn't feel like I was actually getting an escape. So I just threw myself into working out because, you know, in North Carolina, all my friends had left by that point. Mm -hmm. Uh, Everyone had left. The relationship was over. So I was like, okay, I need to do something. And I needed to occupy my mind because my mind was taking full control of everything. And all I thought about was that relationship, right? And so going into like working out, I'm someone who I go to like solid core and pure bar. Those are the two main ones because I need an instructor. I'm self-aware enough to know that I can't go to the gym and be disciplined as well as I can when there's an instructor in the room Mm -hmm. and the music's loud. It's like distracting that way. The workouts are challenging. There's other people to talk to and engage with while you're working out or the instructor is there. So it occupied my time a lot. And then what would happen is after the workout was over, I would get that runner's high that like all the endorphin rush and I felt great. I was like, you know, I, I'm not, I'm not sad. Like I'm not worried. I'm not thinking about, oh my God, the future. Cause like after a breakup happens, my mom was like, well, now what, <laughs> you know, we're back to square one. Like, how do we do this? And then we're, you know, my name's getting thrown back in those same WhatsApp chats, you know, like, oh, there's Vero. Or my mom, she would show me people. And I was like, I can't do this. Right. Yeah. I can't do this right now. Um, so I would, I was, I was constantly chasing that runner's high. And then ultimately, you know, when you're working out so much because you needed that mental distraction, a side effect of that is that you start looking better. You start feeling better. I didn't drink as much coffee in the morning to feel energized. And so I had all these other side benefits that I just kept chasing and chasing and chasing. And then like all breakups over time, time is what is going to heal that, right? So over time, uh, the healing process really came. And then you know, you start talking to other people. It's always good to keep open communication with your friends, your family, because they just want to support you. Right. And then you get through it. So if a girl's listening to this and thinking, Vera, I'm going through a breakup just like you, Mm -hmm. and I'm putting myself into working out. I am talking to my friends. I'm doing girls nights. I'm reading books. Yep. What are the top three things that this girl can do to just take control of their mind again. You could be down a rabbit hole in a matter of 
seeing anything on TV or a text or not seeing a text. Right. Um, what are the three things that you can share with anyone that's going through a breakup that you think just really helped you get through that time? I think that the number one is mindset. I think I've always kind of tried to believe that, you know, the universe is always working in my favor. Yeah. Things in the universe are working for you. You know, things aren't happening to you. It's all in your benefit ultimately. So having that mindset really helped. Yeah. Another thing I grew up hearing a lot from my dad, number two, was the idea that you would rather wait a longer time than anyone <laughs> would rather wait a long time for the right person than rush into something quickly just because you're looking at this timeline or the people around you. And now you, you're either super unhappy or you're going to have to deal with like most likely a messy divorce. Yeah. So I think having that long-term thinking like, yes, like this relationship ended, but what if it had lasted? And maybe I was being protected from something that I don't even know about. Right. So that, that is the second thing that really helped. And then third thing is I would say like the third thing was just occupying my mind to make the passage of time go by. I think another thing that helped me was like looking inward and thinking, okay, you know, what did I learn from this? Mm -hmm. And then just working on myself that way. And then I think it's so true when people say you will find a relationship or the right person when you're least looking for it. I totally, totally believe that. Yeah. And then you also changed your scenery, which I love for you. Mm -hmm. I went through a breakup and I, I gave up my apartment and I went traveling and I just needed to get out of that space that I had all those memories. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I went to the beach often. I mean, I just changed things up in my own life. I think that that was really helpful to me, but on all those things that you're saying too, that I, I did those as well. And I think they are very helpful and reading books and listening to podcasts too really helped me hearing other people's stories. That's why I really wanted to do this with you because man, I wish that there was a podcast specifically about a breakup and how somebody got through it. Mm -hmm. That was honest and open when I was going through my breakup. Mm -hmm. And so this is just me personally wanting to know, did you feel weird moving to New York, knowing that your ex lives there? Um, great question. I did not, you know, cause I think New York, it's a city for everyone. It's so big. Yes. We do have some overlapping friends, but you know, he and I can be in the same room together. It's fine. Yeah. Um, so that makes things easier for sure. Um, back to what you were saying though, about, you know, you have all these memories and in, in your house or your apartment that, and I think what I'm very similar in the sense of when the breakup happened, I was like, Oh, this was a place he sat when we like had our last yes. meal together. So you yes. know what I would do? I would force myself to recreate a new memory in that same spot. Oh. Yeah, that really helped me, you know, cause we upped and we up and left, right? But a lot of people don't have that luxury. But I think right. if you can like change the memory associated with that particular spot or whatever it is, you know, or like one thing I did is like on season, in season two, we see him bring this big bouquet of flowers. Uh, when he comes to meet me and my parents. And then like, I still have that vase and I never used it because I kept the dried petals from that bouquet in that vase. And I just put it to the side. And I was like, oh, you know, this is it. Mm -hmm. I chucked the petals away. I got myself a fresh set of flowers, like by me for me. And I put them in there. I put them on the kitchen counter and I looked at them every day and it, you know, it created a new memory in that space. Yeah. And then the more you keep doing that in all, in all aspects of your house or your apartment or wherever, the car, wherever, you start to create distance between that memory and that person and like other aspects of your life. If you can't like up and leave. So that was very helpful actually. So I'm glad you said that. It reminded me of that. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. <laughs> and also cue Miley Cyrus. I can buy myself flowers. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. I totally can. We all can. <laughs> oh my gosh. No, that's great. That's actually really important what you're saying because you're right. Like it, it also rewires your brain. It's not just about I need to get rid of this memory with this person. It's also, this is my life. And you have agency yep. over your own life, your apartment, totally. your house, your job, your table, you know, right. whatever your right. boss. Right. You know? And it is also a, a way for you to take the power back for yourself. Totally. I'm so glad you brought that up. And I'm so glad that that jogged your memory. So yeah. tell me a little bit about what's going on now. Are you dating now? Are you single? People are asking. People want to know. <laughs> yes. Yes. So, um, I am dating. Well, I'll start with when I first, when I first moved to New York, I downloaded Bumble and I downloaded mm -hmm. hinge. Um, 
Hinge, I was reported as a fake profile. So I had to like <laughs> go through this whole appeal oh, thing. God. I was like, not worth it. You know, I was like, the universe does not want me to meet my person through an app. That's how I took it. Um, I was trying to make new friends in the city that had no connection, you know, with my ex who lives here. Cause like we had a lot of mutual friends. I need to make friends of my own. Yeah. I don't know how to do that. So I downloaded Bumble um, because they have the Bumble BFF version. Yeah. And so I met a few girls that way. Um, and then, you know, just being in the same app, I would switch over to the the dating part. Mm -hmm. And I met two really great guys there. Um, those two didn't work out. I stayed friends with one of them. And then I met a guy through friend of a friend or he, yeah, he's a friend of a friend. Um, and he and I've been dating for a month now. And yeah. I think I saw this on your Instagram. He doesn't have social media, right? No. Can we talk about that for a second? Because yes. <laughs> we can. what a freeing thing. Yeah. Going from everyone seeing your relationship to yep. no one even seeing him, which is like amazing. Honestly, it's very refreshing. I am on social media. I, I love social media. I think there's a lot of good that can come out of it. Yeah. But it's so nice. I mean, you know, aside from having my previous relationship being so public, I was never someone who put my significant other on my profile. One thing for me, it's, it always hurt when I was single. It always hurt my feelings to see couples put their photos up. Yeah. And like, I would just get bitter and like, I would be unhappy. And then like, I would just be like, oh, no one wants to see this. Yeah. And then so, you know, being in a relationship, uh, you know, even before the show, I was like, I don't want to be that person who does that because I know what it felt like to see it. Mm -hmm. um, and my relationship is for me. It's not for the world, right? <laughs> Says the girl who went on reality TV. I understand, <laughs> I understand that. But, you know, the, the crux of it is that, you know, so. Now that I'm finally away from it, I do enjoy like having like a private relationship again. Uh, he's not on social media at all, which is great. This is probably going to be a hot take, but like guys excessively on social media is a red flag. Oh my goodness. And also <laughs> the other thing I remember being once, it wasn't really a relationship. It was just like someone I was dating for a little bit. And yeah. I would go on social media and like, you know how when they like a girl's picture and you can see yeah him first I'm like why yeah. is he liking all these girls bikini pictures what a red flag that is yep. and I was thinking about that for you because I was like oh great Viral doesn't have to deal with that so that's awesome nope. oh my god you know like that's something I learned you know before my most recent ex all the guys I dated they just didn't have social media it was a complete 180 from what my last relationship was and I think social media can be the downfall of many relationships because it takes it takes two very secure people in a relationship to be able to both have an online presence to that degree and still be solid behind the scenes, you know? You and know. It's, also, it's also all these small things like, why didn't you look at my story? And all, you know, all yeah, it's small yeah, bullshit it's, things. Yeah, it becomes something so small. And, you know, for me in full transparency, this isn't anything I've said out loud to anybody yet. It bothered me that he never posted a photo of me on his social media when I put him on a global platform. And that's fucked up, by the way. And that's fucked up. <laughs> Straight up. And, you know, and my friends would tell me like, girl, why doesn't he do that? And I'm like, well, everyone knows we're dating. It's not a big thing. Yeah. But it is a big thing. It is a big thing. That's like one of the things that I swallowed, you know, mm -hmm. to make the relationship work. I'm like, yes, I'm not on his social media, but I know my relationship outside of it, you know, yeah. and I put a lot more agency in that. And that is true. But I think it's warranted when you're on a public platform like Netflix to show that you're significant other. I think that's totally fair. Yes. Um, and you're going to India and you're buying jewelry and all the things. Yeah. And, and we're meeting like parents. no pictures. Right. We're meeting parents. Like that's like, come on. And then, you know, when I would bring it up, it was, uh, it was completely flipped on me. You know, I, not that I was gaslighted, but it was just like, oh, you know, I've just never done that in the past. I'm like, okay. But again, I knew my relationship outside of social media. So I didn't let it get to me. Yeah. But yeah. yeah, that was, that did bother me for sure. But all these small things that you're bringing up are not actually small things in terms of, yeah, maybe it's not to the extent of gaslighting, but all of the small sure. things are thorns. You mm -hmm. feel it. Like, and I, I know exactly how you would feel. And I would feel probably the same way if I, I was dating a guy on Netflix and everyone's seeing our relationship and they go to his Instagram and there's no pictures of me automatically people would think oh they're not together anymore you know right and then mm -hmm. also in the back of a woman's mind it always it always uh gives that leeway for you to think well is he talking to other girls mm -hmm. on Instagram mm -hmm. 
Like sure. you, a healthy relationship, and maybe we can talk a little bit about this, but a healthy mm-hmm. relationship doesn't warrant all these questions. If you're asking True. questions about, is he X, Y, Z, you know, why is there no pictures of, of me right. on Instagram? All these things that might not be a healthy situation for you. Or even if you feel it is open the communication. And then if a man really loves you, he'll say, babe, yes, you're right. Like I understand mm-hmm. how you feel. Let's take some pictures. We'll put some up and, and, you know, because yeah. it's about your safety and your feeling too. It's two people, two whole for people sure. coming together. And I think that that's a really, really important thing. And it's, probably a lot of silent things that women deal with in relationships. And it forces you to think about what is a healthy relationship feel like for me? Mm-hmm. And what does a healthy relationship look like in your life? When you yeah. look around, what, what can you look at as a example of a healthy relationship? And I think that's part of the problem, right? Like with social media, we just mm-hmm. see people being together, but we don't know if they're in a healthy relationship. Correct. We just Correct. see them skipping through fields and like whatever they're doing. I don't even right. know. You know what they're doing. <laughs> right. What they're right. doing nowadays. But yeah. I think I think um Michelle Obama, she did something with Oprah recently when she was doing her book tour for the light we carry. Mm-hmm. And she was talking about relationships there. And she says, me and Barack, it's not like it's 50, 50 every day. Sometimes it's 70, 30. Sometimes it's zero and a hundred. Someone's doing all the heavy lifting sometimes. And I think we tend to shy away from admitting you know, that the relationship isn't 50, 50, because we're told, oh, it should be like even, all yeah. but that's not how it is every day. And I think she does a really good job about just being candid about what it takes to make a relationship work. And she talks a lot about like, one thing um, I remember when I was going through my breakup very early on, I think it was a comment she made on Ellen. It was just about like how she's raising her two daughters to be like, don't let a relationship be the thing that completes you or defines you. You are more than just someone's plus one. Mm -hmm. And Mm -hmm. so I think it's, she's teaching them to like spend time learning a skill, like getting into another hobby and like building themselves up and building their own identity outside of a relationship. And I think that's very valuable. Yeah. Yeah. I like to listen to like the older generation sometimes when they do have a successful relationship talk about a relationship. And Michelle's been like, ever since she's left the White House, she's Mm -hmm. been very, very candid. And one thing I I learned also from listening to her and other people too, and I've thought about it for myself, I think that people put romantic relationships so much on a pedestal, especially the Indian culture, right? Like it's always about the guy choosing the girl um, Mm -hmm. to get married to her in a Bollywood movie or whatever it is, right? And I think that- People put romantic relationships so much on a pedestal, more so than being a participant in your own life. Like what you're talking about, like learn a skill, like have your own friends, build a Mm -hmm. business, do something right for yourself. Romantic relationships in my own investigation are not the most important relationship in my life. It is an important aspect and facet of my life. But I would have to say to my girlfriends, they've been through peaks and valleys with me through boyfriends and and breakups and everything. Right. Since I was like three or four years old, I have the same group of girlfriends. So yeah. And I think that that relationship, because of the time that we've spent going through real hard life things is an important relationship. The the relationship with my parents is an important relationship in my life. And if a guy comes along and wants to join this party, that's already a full life. I think that that's, right. a, that's an important messaging that somehow seems to be missing. It's we all do. about get the guy and, and all of that stuff. And I'm kind of like, mm-hmm. live your life, watch his actions, you know, yeah. and yeah. make an educated decision for yourself. Very true. You know, I think growing up, it's always like everything it seems like is geared to finding like a guy. It's um, okay, make sure you get good grades in school so you can go to a good go to a good college, right? Go to a good college so you can get a good job so you can find a good partner in life or so you can contribute to the household when you have kids. Like everything is so geared towards that rather than being like, okay, do these things for yourself so you feel more fulfilled and happy. It, yeah. it has it has nothing to do with that. It's always just the guy, the guy, the guy. The you guy. know, and I think it's good to have conversations like this that kind of reframe and redirect that type of mindset because yeah. it needs a big changing for sure. Yeah. Like have a full life. Yeah. 
And then I think that the type of person too, that you attract when you have a full life is a Mm -hmm. different level of person. And I agree. Yeah. That, that happened to me. I mean, the level of, I I remember when I went through this breakup and I spent like a year and a half doing all this work on myself and I didn't know if I was actually going to get over my ex, that's the truth. Like I was Mm -hmm. doing all these things, you know, Mm -hmm. reading books, going on walks, yoga. I love bar. I do bar. Um, and I was just doing it because I'm like, this is all self-care and I felt really good doing it. But when I went to bed at night, I wasn't a hundred percent sure, like I'm over him or whatever, you know, but I think it's important to mention that all of these things create an environment or an ecosystem inside of yourself for that healing and for you to get over your your relationship. So when someone that's incredible walks into your life, um, I remember when the first person that was incredible that walked into my life and he sat down in front of me for our first date, I actually Mm -hmm. felt like my body buzzing. I was like, Mm. what the hell is this? Yeah. (laughs) And I actually, the space in between us, I felt something buzzing. I was like, what the fuck is this? I don't know what this is. This is weird. I cannot be like automatically liking this person. This is our first date. He just said hello, you know? (laughs) And, um, and and then I had, I had to call my therapist. I was like, Hey, can we schedule a session? Something's yeah. happening with me. And I think I'm maybe attaching myself to this guy too sure. much or something. And then, sure. so we get on the session the next day and she says to me, you know, what happened, all that work that you've been doing, you created space. So when someone walked into your life, number one, you can recognize them. There wasn't all that hurt there. And it was like a clean slate. And on top of that, the, the buzzing that you felt, that was evidence. That was the moment you actually broke up with your ex. That was the moment oh. that was validation for you. Like, this is it. And she's like, and yeah. if nothing ever comes that first date, not to say you're going to fall in love with this person, but if nothing ever comes of that, that's evidence to you. Like all this work you've been doing for a year and a half, there was meaning for it. Yeah. You're free now. Like that's removed yeah. from your, from the insides of your body. And I, I took that and I was like, I was skipping that day. I was like, thank yeah. God. Like yeah, no, awesome. Yeah, yeah. So I want to go through some of the questions that people ask. Sure. Because All right. Some of them are really good. And, and I guess everyone's just curious, right? Like to know kind of what's going on with you, mm-hmm. um, which is probably weird for you, I know. <laughs> <laughs> All right. What are your green flags while dating? Oh, my goodness. Green flags. I would say a really good relationship with the mom. Like if he has a really good relationship with his mom, I think, you know, that shows that he knows how, how women communicate well. Right. Um, But you have to be very careful here because you you don't want to tow, you want to tow that line very carefully when it's like, is this like an invasive type of relationship or, you know, is it kind of normal, you know, more normal than like what we traditionally see in Indian culture where, where there's like over coddling and things like that. So I think one good thing is like a healthy relationship relationship with um, his mom. For me, reading is a big thing. Um, I think if they enjoy reading it, I think it's, it, it's a sign that they have empathy. Mm -hmm. Um, because you have to, when you're reading, you're reading a story of someone else, you're putting yourself in their shoes and then kind of living that journey through the book. I think that's another green flag. Yeah. Um, I think another good one is their habits. Like just what habits they have, if they have like habits that align with yours or healthy habits that you can see that you would want your children to have. I think those are good things for sure. Cause I think it's, you know, for me in my last relationship, like the, the parting was just excessive and, you know, that's just not something I ever really did. It's something I participated in Mm -hmm. because my significant other did it, you know, and I I lost myself in that a little bit, Mm -hmm. but then it's like, I don't want my kids seeing that or like being so close to that partying lifestyle or like yeah. culture, or whatever. Yeah. Um, other green, what's another good green flag that I think, I think if you have open and honest early communication in the beginning, I think what worked for me in my current relationship is we met through mutual friends. And so I think I was able to see how he is with my friends already Mm -hmm. And then it was easier for me to establish a friendship and then build a relationship off of that rather than go into it like, okay, are we doing this or not? Yeah. Because then that that can really like create like a panic inside of us almost. And then like you said, you know, our representatives show up rather than us. Yeah. So I think that's another good one. 
Yeah. What are the values that you want in a person, your non-negotiables? Non-negotiable values. I definitely like exercise and fitness. I think because, you know, one thing I said in season two is and what I'm looking for is I'm looking for a good role model for my kids. You know, and I want my kids to grow up, you know, making the right healthy choices for themselves, you know, like not leaning into like smoking or drinking when, when they experience something like a breakup, for example, yeah. having a different coping mechanism rather than something like that. Mm -hmm. uh, someone who's career driven, regardless of what they do, as long as they have a, like a passion for it, or they've kind of decided this is what I want to do. This is how I want to grow. Like having that, I think is another solid value. And then I know we all say family values, but family values is a big one because at the end of the day, that's all you have. Yeah. 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 I'm just going to keep going through these questions. I didn't realize how many questions okay. people have asked for you. Um, oh, so the next one is, what would you say to someone that is uncomfortable dating? Because dating can seem so difficult in today's world with social media, dating apps, and all the different platforms. It is very overwhelming, but I think it just take it one step at a time. And just one thing that helped me a lot is my friends who are married would say, it's a numbers game. You mm -hmm. just, there's a certain number that each person has to go through. And all you need to do is make one work. I was someone who took that approach. I was like, I'm just going to throw every shoestring at the wall and see what sticks. So mm -hmm. I was on the apps. I was trying to like find people through friends, like trying to look through work and what, I, and it can be overwhelming when you have so many different avenues to try and find people. But I think at that point you have to check in with yourself and say, am I overwhelmed so much so that I wouldn't even, I wouldn't even be able to bring my best self to a first date mm -hmm. or am I so distracted because there's so many options? You know, that's one thing C. Monty always told us is that you don't want to overwhelm yourself with so many options because then you're just going to get confused. You're not going to know what to do. So try and focus on one at one person at a time. So I think that's probably a good approach, like try everything. But then when you find one person that comes through these avenues, really focus on them and then put every, every other avenue you're trying on the back burner until, and then just remember it's a numbers game and you only have to make it work with one person. Right, right, exactly. And then I think the other thing probably too, I might add on to that is like, you have to know number one, if you're really ready to like mm -hmm. what you're ready for. Some people yeah. are just ready to get back into the dating game and go on dinner <laughs> dates and whatever it is. Some yeah. people are ready for their long-term partner, right? Like mm -hmm. to find that, that person. And I think that that comes up a lot for, for women. Like you don't know what kind of guy you're dating, like, and what he's ready for, you know? And I think that's right. really important, but it's important to you, for you to know too. And then also um, just, I think for me, having faith that something will yield of these dates, right? Like when I was mm -hmm. dating, like something will yield of this and I will meet my person and I will find my person. Mm -hmm. And it will be certainly like your dad says, worth the wait, you know? Definitely. Definitely. All right, let's do this. What advice would you okay. give for someone that wants to go on a reality show? And would you suggest it? Would you suggest going on a reality show? dating specifically or any reality show? dating and maybe the better question here is if you had to do this all over again would you have gone on the show so I'm someone who I don't believe in regrets you know I think the universe is always kind of pushing us to where we belong and where we need to be do I have negative feelings about going on the reality tv dating show no it was something that I had to go through in order to get to where I am so I think having that mindset is helpful like I always talked about moving to New York and I never did but then I told myself when season three comes out, I want to be in New York just to maximize the opportunities for myself. And then I moved up here and now I'm in like the best relationship I've ever had. And so do I regret any of it? Would I do it all over again? Yes, because it ultimately still got me to where I want to be because I do have that belief again that the universe is guiding you. So I don't think it's healthy to have regrets um, when you have that mindset because then it's kind of contradictory. Um, the advice for someone who wants to go on a reality TV dating show, be yourself. It's cliche, but like you, like, like, you know, I think we're referencing this a lot, but like you said, the representative shows up, but if your representative shows up over time, it's going to come out, you know, who you really are. And then also be ready, be ready for becoming a public figure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's a big deal yep. too. There's a yep. guy that was on the last episode. He's a founder and CEO of a company. And he said, when you're not sure of who to be, just be yourself. 
Yeah. When you're going through a tough situation when you're feeling anxiety or you're mm-hmm. nervous about something where you're not sure of who to be, uh, be mm-hmm. yourself. And I thought that was so great because it is true. People look to be a cooler version of themselves or, right. or too much of a poker face on a first date or something. Mm-hmm. And then right. it just ends up turning off the other person. So yeah, totally. just, just be yourself. And- and people are smart. I think people will see right through things like that. If you're not being yourself, the yeah. older we get, the wiser we are getting, you know? And so yes. it's like, we're, we're able to see these things pretty quickly. Yeah. That's the beauty about age too. I, mm-hmm. I feel like you and I could talk forever. Um, <laughs> how should I preface that? I don't want to live with my in-laws. Ooh. Oh, okay. So let's see. Uh, how do you start that? Um, let's see. I I grew up with my cousin in a joint family. So I saw that and I was like, okay, I could see this working out, but how do you say it? You know, I think there's a, just like any aspect of your relationship, you want open and honest communication in the beginning. And I think it's always good to say, I personally, like, what do you see our future looking like? Don't, don't ask the yes, no questions, ask the open-ended questions and have that helps have a conversation around it. What's your relationship like with your parents? That's a place to start. Mm -hmm. They're like, Oh, you know, it's this, that, this, that. And then you can ask, you know, what's, what are your, I think in in Indian culture, especially like, you know, the concept of a nursing home is very like new taboo. It's not something it's very frowned upon in our culture. Right. Mm -hmm. And then I think it's probably, you know, just start there. You know, how do you feel about that? And then at that point, you express how you feel. You know, I don't see myself living with my in-laws, like in my own house permanently. How do you feel about that? Right. And then, you know, you uh, you have your pros and cons for each. And I think if you can have an open and honest conversation with your partner about it, that's a good place to start. And also, I wouldn't overcommit myself to any opinion. Like if you have an opinion like, oh, I'm not going to live with my in-laws. You never know where you're going to be five years from now where you're like, hey, you know, right? maybe maybe, maybe I could get down with this. Or you're in a pandemic and you have to. And you something. have to, right, right. So that's a way to look at it. But um, yeah, never say never. I think that's another thing. You never know what can happen. So I wouldn't stick too strongly on any conviction about living with in-laws. Yeah, I, I agree with that. And I think too, like in a relationship, it's not that I'm so rigid about I'm not going to do this and I am going to do this. But if I meet someone that I love, I know myself, like I will have a discussion about it and maybe compromise in in that regard. Right. Because I love this person. Um, Last question. What is your definition of a good life partner for you? AKA, what are you looking for? (laughs) Yeah. I think a lot of the checklists we see in season two, the big things still stands, you know, I do want someone who's like, who's going to be like a younger a parent with me, you know, I think that's something that's important, the active lifestyle, like not someone who's like into just this partying and things like that. Right. Um, and again, ultimately, it's really someone who my kids can look up to as a role model, because I think a lot of women, you know, now we're, you know, we're at a point in history where we there are the most female CEOs in history than yeah. there have ever been, you know, we're, Uh, There was that statistic that single women, there are more single women households in the United States than there are men, you know, so it it just really shows how far women have come. Mm -hmm. And so I think we need to like keep appreciating that and keep following that. And so it's like when we have ourselves as a whole person, Mm -hmm. you know, we want someone who can complement our life rather than fill it. So I think when we have a full life ourselves, kind of like we talked about earlier, just having someone who can be a part of your life rather than your whole life. Right. So that's what I'm working for. Someone who can integrate pretty seamlessly. Yeah. And that's great. That's a great answer and a great stopping point. Thank you so much for spending your time with me today. It was such a great conversation. I hope that everyone that listens to it gets a lot out of this conversation and, and understands that you know, breakups are a part of life, like even in friendships, and it's not something so taboo that we can't speak about. Where can people find you if they want to follow and maybe interact with you more? Sure. So I am only on one social media platform, and that is Instagram. And my Instagram is Viral Joshi underscore. Okay, cool. Yeah, Yeah, yeah. So I'll definitely I'll reach out. We'll hang out. Yeah, for sure. Let me know. All right. Have a great rest of the day. You too. Thank you. Bye. Bye. 